Yo, yo, happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday, everyone. My name is Justin Moore, founder of Creator Wizard, where I teach you how to find and negotiate your dream sponsorships. Let me know where you're tuning in from today. It is a beautiful Friday uh, over here. Uh, today, we are talking about uh, how to create a pitching habit in seven days. Are you excited about this? You excited about this? Because I am. Drop it in the chat where you're tuning in from. Uh, I am going to press go live on Instagram uh, as well uh, because I'm going live on Instagram. And for some reason, it's not showing portrait mode over there. I'm not sure why, but I'm just rolling with it. Um, we've got Kathy tuning in on TikTok. We've got Ludi. Yeah, I'm going live across a bunch of different platforms, by the way. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Twitter, I don't even know where else, probably somewhere else. Uh, we've got Molly, what's going on Molly? Good to see you here, happy Friday, fourth born child. Uh, we've got DIY Jean, Jenny Lou Yoga, tuning in from New York, the KMH family, Hanadi, what's going on? Tuning in from Atlanta, good to see you here. Eagle Eye, tuning in uh, on TikTok. We've got Elizabeth Love Healer on IG. What's going on, Coco Bella, Katie Moran. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Shalina Sharma, good to see you all here today. Uh, all right, guys, we've got a couple uh, really exciting announcements today. First and foremost, um, wanted to thank uh, the sponsor of today's live stream, Uscreen. I'm going to talk about them uh, a little bit later. Um, also, very exciting news. Our seven-day pitch challenge is starting today. Enrollment ends in less than two hours. We have our kickoff call at 1 p.m. Pacific uh, today, which is a live call, um, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, if, you have, if you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, my seven-day pitch challenge is is um, starting today and going through next week, uh, where we uh, help you try to land, uh, you know, your next sponsorship and develop a, a consistent pitching habit. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons that we decided to start this challenge, well, let's first of all, let's talk about why pitching is important. Um, because I think a lot of a lot of people ask, like, like why why focus on pitching? Why not something else? Negotiation, pricing, etc. Um, so. We have some really interesting data. So those of you who have been following me uh, for a long time know that uh, I have this thing called the Sponsorship Wheel Snapshot, which is a uh, assessment tool that uh, helps you rate yourself at all the different areas of my my uh, sponsorship wheel, which is like my eight-step methodology to help you uh, create a, a sponsorship strategy, essentially. Um, and by the way, I think if, if Bianca is here in the chat somewhere from my team, she's going to drop the link to the sponsorship wheel snapshot because it's free. You, any, anyone can take it. Um, and you basically rate yourself in, in all these various areas. Um, and almost universally, because we have now aggregate data across all hundreds of creators who have taken this assessment, and almost without fail, pitching, which is step one, is the area that everyone rates themselves the lowest. And, uh, you know, it kind of makes sense because, um, you know, uh, if you if you cannot get past this first step, <laughs> right, to like be more confident when you're reaching out to a brand or be more confident when a brand is coming inbound and you still have to pitch them on why you're the best person for the job, if you don't have that confidence, then it's going to be really difficult and it's kind of moot to master all of those other areas, two steps two through eight on my wheel. And so we really wanted to create, uh, you know, something, some sort of uh, mini boot campy type workshop thing uh, to help people get over the hump of like, getting more confidence when it comes to uh, pitching brands and not just uh, the confidence aspect. It's actually how do you develop a habit uh, behind doing this consistently? Because it's really easy to um, forget about about the fact that, you know, you have to keep the lights on here. How, how do you maintain the stamina to uh, continue being a creator for a long time period. And in my experience, the way in which you continue to have that stamina is to have this be a sustainable thing, right? That you're able to derive income from your creator business so that you can either pour it back into your work, pour it, you know, continue to make great art or provide for your family. Let's all, let's all be real here. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with driving an income from this and, 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 you know, putting food on the table, putting a roof over your head and, and more, right? It's not just like we want, we want, we're here to like, uh, you know, like uh, thrive here, not just survive. Right. Um, and so, so, you know, understanding that this shouldn't, this can't just be something that you do temporarily. I, in fact, I, I released a public coaching call on my YouTube channel um, not so long ago uh, with a creator named Lexi who who ran a business called They Got Acquired. And one of the things that she talked about in the beginning of that call uh, was that she does these like sponsorship pushes where she like, you know, 
for, for the next like two or three weeks, she just like sends out a bunch of emails and like tries to book out her sponsorship inventory uh, for the next three, four months or whatever. And then, and then she doesn't do anything for the next three, four months. She goes heads down back on the business, back on the content hamster wheel. And then, oh no, like two, three months down the line, I realize we don't have any sponsors for the next, you know, the next chunk of months got to go out and do the push again. And um, that's a really great way to burn yourself out over it's a great way to put pitching onto this pedestal as something that like, oh God, I gotta do this now. I gotta go do the pitching push. I gotta go do this. And it like creates it, it makes it this whole thing. Um, and that's the, that's that's a very good way to just turn yourself out, turn yourself off from the process of collaborating with brands because it feels as though it's this this very distasteful thing. Um, and so the the importance of, of having pitching be something that you don't that, that you do all the time, not something that you don't put it off for like once a quarter or once every three, four months that you do. Um, like, and it becomes something that uh, is something that you do either weekly or biweekly at the, at the latest. Um, then you just realize, okay, this just becomes something that I do all the time. And so that's why we wanted to create this seven day pitching challenge, uh, because, uh, because, you know, I, I'm hoping that it'll stimulate, uh, this, this habit that you need to form, uh, when you collaborate with brands. And so, uh, very excited. Um, anyone who is, uh, is interested in, in participating, uh, Bianca is also going to list the, the, uh, the, uh, the link, I think probably Bianca, I see you on Instagram. Maybe we need to switch over to YouTube too. Cause I, I'm not sure you may, may not be able to see the links or they're not clickable on Instagram. So maybe on, on YouTube, but yeah, the, the link is just uh, creator wizard.com slash pitch challenge. Uh, we have over 50 creators who have already signed up. I'm super, super excited about that. We've got John Willis tuning in here. We've got Sarah Dawn tuning in from sunny Toronto, uh, doing some knitting. Love to see it. We've got Elizabeth Nattel, uh, happy lunar year, new year. Yes, of course. Happy lunar new year to anyone who's celebrating, uh, Kristen and Saya. Um, is this happening? Yes, it's happening. Kristen and Saya. Uh, the, uh, the pitch challenge is, uh, is, kicking off in a couple hours here. So, uh, if you're, if you, if you're interested in, in, uh, signing up and you have not yet, uh, definitely check out creatorwizard.com slash, uh, slash, uh, uh, pitch challenge. Sorry. Um, all right. So we've got, um, Let's see. Uh, Ivy Riku said, if I register on Monday, is it too late? Yes, it is too late because we're kicking it off today. Uh, enrollment ends for the pitch challenge in uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So uh, if you're not able to uh, to dive in uh, today, hopefully you can check it the next time. I'm not sure when we're going to be doing it again. Hopefully we will be at some point, but don't have any um, heavy plans uh, quite yet. Um, let's see here. All right. So uh, let's see we've, who else we got in the chat here. The Nikita Sachin. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, Ace Stallings 88. Um, let's see here. We've got, um, uh, okay. Uh, who do we, who is this non nail artist? I think is the, is the username we've got pod sound school. Oh, pod sound school. I think I, I think, uh, crystal just connected us, right? Yeah. Excited to, to be on your podcast. Um, uh, uh, very soon. So nice to see you here, uh, as well. Um, realtor Viviana says how much just got in. It's $97. It's the most affordable thing that I've ever created. Um, and so if, if that sounds like, uh, it's wallet friendly to you, creatorwizard.com slash uh, pitch challenge. Uh, and, uh, Bianca, I see you here in the YouTube chat now. I think you're going to be dropping the link uh, shortly. Yeah. It's just creatorwizard.com slash pitch challenge. In fact, I think I have it, the link open here. Um, in case Bianca is not able to drop links in the, in the YouTube chat. So there it is. Um, uh, we got, uh, Jenny Lou yoga. Good to see you here. Yeah. So, um, so back to the importance of, of creating a habit. Um, I, I'm actually curious, like what are the biggest pitching obstacles for, for y'all? Um, you know, one thing that, that we're going to talk about in the challenge is like, um, th there's a, there's a lot of these types of blocks, right? You've got, um, what do I even say if I were to reach out to a brand or they, you know, come inbound to me asking to, if the, you know, they're interested in a collaboration, what do I even say? Um, another thing is who do I send it to? If I am the one reaching out and pitching a brand, who do I actually, you know, like, do I DM them on Instagram? Do I send it to press at brand.com? <laughs> do I, do I, uh, you know, try to find their contact on LinkedIn? Um, that's a block for a lot of people. Um, another block is, um, actually this is going to get kind of deep, but like, um, am I worthy? I either do I, am I big enough? Do I have a large enough platform to even be worthy to reach out to a brand? And this one gets kind of deep actually, because, um, one thing that I've also found working with, with hundreds of creators over the last you know couple of years is that it's a lot of the psychological stuff, oftentimes from our childhood that impacts our ability to be confident and, and reach out to a brand. If you can imagine when you're young, 
let's say that you grew up in a family where money was tight. Um, maybe some of you can identify with this, that like you just didn't ask for things because you knew the answer was gonna be no. Um, and, and it's really interesting to see how something like that pervades uh, into our adulthood um, in, in very surprising ways, whether it's lacking the confidence to ask for a raise or a promotion in your corporate job or your nine to five job, or not going, not, not in school pushing for certain things because you just never really thought that you were the person who could, who could accomplish that. Um, but, but more specifically, this idea about reaching out to a brand with kind of your hat in your hand and saying like, will you work with me? That's, that's a really hard thing for some people to do given, uh, you know, things that may have happened uh, growing up. Maybe there's other types of, of, of uh, you know, financial trauma, like just money was just not something you discussed. It was taboo, especially certain cultures. I know in certain certain area, you know, um, places around the world, uh, you just don't really talk about money much. It's like not a, not a thing, right? Um, and so you, for better or for worse, whether it's functional or dysfunctional, uh, you developed your own uh, relationship with money as you grew up, oftentimes colored by your childhood. So uh, I'm curious uh, if anyone here, if, if anyone resonates with that, um, because it definitely, definitely, uh, I know impacts a lot of people for their, uh, not only their confidence to actually reach out to a brand, but um, especially when it gets into the negotiation, that's when it gets really, uh, really challenging. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Sarah says, um, uh, one of the biggest challenges is figuring out how to pitch. Most design collaborations are very much brand initiated, so I have no idea how to reach out to a brand if they don't open, uh, if they don't have an open call. Interesting. Delilah says, "I was raised that when you find a job that will pay you ten dollars an hour, you hold on and you never leave ever. You'll never do better than that." Man, that is that is crazy. That is that is. I mean, I'm so that's very vulnerable of you to share, uh, Delilah, and uh, you're not alone because I've heard this a lot. I've heard this type of sentiment uh, a lot um, that, uh, that, that, you know, there's a lot of folks in a similar uh, position um, uh, as you. Um, uh, Katie Moran says, so powerful the idea that you stop asking. Yeah, that that really is, um, you, I, I think we, we don't think about it. It just becomes part of like, oh, that, well, that's just never for me. That's never something that I could do. And, and this, it's this narrative, it's this script that we have about our life that was ingrained in, in our very formative years, sometimes when we were really, really young. When we were really, really young. In fact, I was on a podcast um, uh, uh, maybe six months ago or something, I was talking about this with with the host, um, that he was talking about his childhood that um, whenever he would ask for something, you know, that was either expensive or, you know, it was just a little bit more, um, he was just immediately shot down, immediately shot down. And, and, and the words that he remembers hearing in his childhood had a big impact on him. That, that, that was just like, it was never like, that's, that is too expensive. That is, that is too far out from something that we would ever do. And so the words that you use, whether it's self-talk, it's the things that you say to yourself or uh, the things that others have said to you throughout your life, that, that makes a big difference. So what this guy was saying is that he's very, very careful about the words that he uses for his own children, um, where he, he wants to, to ensure that if they ask for something, that it's not because it's too expensive that they can't have. It's because you have to work for uh, achieving something like that. So maybe it's, you know, uh, yeah, there's a certain number of errands or, or, or a certain number of chores that you have to do to you know save up your allowance or do these types of things. So it's not that you can't have it now because it's too expensive. You can't have it now because you haven't worked to achieve it. Right. And so I think that there's these like really subtle things in our brain sometimes that we've, we've trained ourselves mentally. It's this negative self-talk that prevents us from having the confidence to reach out and potentially pick uh, pitch a potential sponsor that would be, you know, frankly, a, a great fit for us. So, um, you know, glad, glad to hear that Katie, that, uh, that resonated with you. Um, um, uh, Jenny says my current challenge is that they said that they have no budget, right? So how to, how to break into the world uh, of sponsors in that sense. Yeah. Uh, I, or, or sorry, it just moved up. My current challenge is that they said they have no budget. So I just got some free gifts and the affiliate commission when I make a sale, I got you. Yeah. Very, very pervasive. Um, uh, COZ Christopher says, uh, agree very much. So 15 years in HR and talent acquisition, my experiences professionally and personally confirm that certain cultures do not ask for the same often underselling their skill or value. That is a, such a, a, a great, 
um, uh, anecdote here because, the, again, you can see that this pervades not just like being a creator on your own, but even in a traditional uh, corporate setting. Christopher was in HR and, and talent acquisition and different people just have, you know, different comfort levels uh, to like kind of really ask what they're worth. Dash in the TikTok chat says, are you really live? Yes, Dash, I'm really live. Uh, thank you for spamming this comment a zillion times. Yes, I am really live. <laughs> um, uh, Delilah says, I grew up very poor. My dad went to prison when I was seven and my mom was unable to work. So welfare section eight food stamps was it for us. We used to get pulled out of school to help sell in the flea market for, 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 for dollars for money. Wow. Delilah, that is incredible. Uh, and, and thank you for sharing. I mean, that, I know that's not easy to, to share, but th this was your reality. This was your life. And like you, you know, I, I'm sh like you mentioned earlier, like this absolutely affects um, how we think about ourselves and in our prospects for the future. So um, I, I, I love seeing you here every week, Delilah, because it's um, it, it very much is so um, uh, it's such a big part of it is like committing to retrain your mind with this type of stuff. Um, and so, so really, really appreciate your, your candor there. Uh, we've got Cheryl, our flow. What's going on, Cheryl. Good to see you here. Good morning. You're, you, you, you uh, maybe you, you needed to get your live stream fixed here, uh, because we, we didn't go live on Amazon this week. Uh, so it's good to, good to see you here, Cheryl. Um, yeah, uh, uh, John says, finding the right rep is really difficult too. Yeah, you almost have to become a d detective to find them. 100%, John, yeah, I, I hear that, man. Um, Coach Joseph Gonzalez, good to see you here. Not, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we are just starting our channel, but have grown to 4,300 subs on our YouTube channel in 28 days. Holy cow, that's amazing, congrats. Not sure what or who to pitch. Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, uh, Faye says, Hey, I just sent my red envelope to my parents. I need working hard now. <laughs> uh, happy, uh, happy lunar new year to you, Faye. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Ola says that right there about how some cultures don't ask for more. We do it often because we think that others think we're not worth it. It takes a lot of self-talk to muster up the courage to ask for more money. So Ola, thank you. Thank you so much for all of you for sharing a lot of this, this, uh, vulnerability here. We got Sierra here in the TikTok chat. Hey, Justin, good to see you here uh, as well. Jasmine, Sierra, VIP exclusive on Instagram. It's Dan Devin, Curator Council, uh, Janelle, Janelle Skin, Texas DIY Mama, Shawnee Bear. Uh, good to see you here uh, as well. Yeah, Sarah says there is some internalized. There's also when you've internalized the the things that people say about you. People don't think that, let's say, someone in a wheelchair can be an entrepreneur. And in my darker moments, I can I can convince myself of that. Man, thank you for for sharing that because everyone like look, everyone has their trauma. Everyone has their story. I, this is really weird, but I was um, on a field trip with my son last week. There's, that's the reason why I didn't do a live stream last Friday. Um, there's like this, I don't know if it's just the state of California. Maybe some of you in different states have this, but there's like this fourth grade uh, uh, state capital trip that I, I remember doing when I was a kid. And so my, my son is in fourth grade. And so I was a chaperone for, for the trip. Um, and we were, um, you know, kind of doing a walking tour of downtown Sacramento, the landmarks and all this stuff. Um, and there is this riverboat there. It's called the Delta King. It's like a steamboat. Uh, and it's permanently, it used to go up and down the Sacramento River. Um, and it was like a hotel and casino and restaurant and all this stuff. It's no longer operating because it's really old, but they, and so they've permanently docked it at the, at the, um, at the, like, not port, but like at the, on the river there by the Capitol, uh, or it's not by the Capitol. It's like by the, by the railroad museum. Um, and we got to go on it. We got to kind of walk through it and kind of see it. It's kind of historical and all this stuff. Um, but this really weird thing happened where I was walking, we were walking through the riverboat and there was like people staying, you know, in the rooms there, there were people dining in the, in the, um, in the restaurant, there was um, bus boys and servers and people just kind of, you know, the normal hustle bustle of like a, of, of a restaurant. And I just thought to myself, I had this moment, um, where it was like, I've never seen this in my entire life. I've never seen this, this restaurant. I've never heard it, even heard of it. Um, and I just, all the, I, I all of a sudden was struck with this feeling that like all of these people who are dining, who are, who are working at this place, they have their own lives. They have their own traumas. They have their own relationships. And I'll never see these people again. And yet, 
I, I was so struck with the fact that we're all going through something. We're all, we all are living our lives. In fact, I, I, I subsequently heard about this word when I was talking with someone about it called sonder. If you've ever heard of this, look it up. It's called sonder. It's this feeling that like, you'll never know what everyone else is going through. And so it, I, it gave me a lot of peace and comfort that like having empathy with what other people are going through is a really, really important thing. And also it, it gave me peace to like, give myself grace with the stuff that I'm going through internally, right? Cause everyone's going through it. Like, you know, like I've been going through a lot the last couple of weeks with, um, you know, my son having surgery and our cat has cancer and, and, uh, you know, we're just trying to do it all. It's just, a, it's, it's been a tough couple, couple last month or so for us, but it just, I don't know, gives me, gives me, gives me peace with that. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I, I thought I would just leave you with that anecdote or share that anecdote with you because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's so easy to look at other people and think that, oh, they're so successful. They're getting so many sponsorships or they're, they're, they're growing so quickly on their thing or whatever, but like, and they think that they have the perfect life. If only I could have that life. Um, and even I have that sometimes. Um, and it gives the, the, you know, thinking about things like this, where it's like, we're all on our own timeline. Um, that gives me peace with knowing that I, I do have things to bring to the table here. I do have things going for me. And if I ever feel like that, I, that, that kind of centers me. So I don't know if that was kind of rambly. Is this, is this resonating with anyone? Um, yeah. Walk on B says, I think it's the uncertainty that leads us to self doubt. Um, uh, I agree with that. I think it absolutely is the uncertainty that, that leads to self doubt. Um, all right. Mm. <clears throat> Katie says, I have 26 K followers on X and Tom Bill is, is coming on my podcast next, uh, this month in May. And I still question if I would be able to get a sponsorship, you know, one of the things uh, that I'm going to talk about in my seven day pitch challenge, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to take a pause here because I know my, my alarm is about to come off. Cause I do want to, I do want to answer your question, uh, Katie. Um, but uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit the pause button on your question. Cause I'm going to come back to it. I want to take a quick moment to acknowledge today's uh, sponsor of the live stream, Uscreen. Uh, they are a longtime uh, partner of Creator Wizard. Um, you know, I, I work with a, a a lot of different types of, of creators, but I've got to say that YouTubers and video first creators in particular always seem to have the hardest time monetizing. It's usually, you know, AdSense and maybe maybe sponsorships for the most part. Um, but when I ask them why they haven't considered a membership, most either stare but stare back blankly or say well i've just never really considered it now uh, I, I believe that especially long form video creators have a really unique advantage to serve their audience on a deeper level through a membership because I think viewers sticking around for 10 to 15 minutes are a lot different than those that swipe away after 30 seconds. Am I right? Uh, and, and you guess it, video memberships are exactly what Uscreen specializes in. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen here so you can uh, see it. Uh, boom, there we go. Um, and so uh, you could see it. Video creators build profitable memberships on on Uscreen. And so uh, again, this is this is what they. Uh, specialize in. In fact, uh, Uscreen has helped creators make more than $150 million by providing the tools, the infrastructure, and the education to design a membership that your audience will thank you for, right? You can see some of the examples here. Um, you know, I talk a lot about how important it is to involve your audience uh, in these types of big business decisions, right? To not just create a membership in a vacuum without asking them what types of features they would want, what type of content, you know, whether they want a built-in community. And once you have that, the good news is that Uscreen can do it all, including live streaming to, to chat rooms, even branded apps for creators. Uh, you know, you might be familiar with, with Yoga with Adrian, for example. She has an app called uh, Find What Feels Good that, that was built by, by Uscreen, by the way. And her value proposition is basically, hey, here's my entire video catalog, no ads, and exclusive content. And you could probably see here that you don't have to be a, a gigantic creator to build a lucrative membership. There's tons of uh, of niche creators that have built a super meaningful income with their memberships uh, as well. Um, and so, by the way, now that I have piqued your interest, um, but 
you, you may be sitting here thinking, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a little overwhelmed, Justin. I, I don't really know where to start, at, just to start. I've never really thought of a membership. Well, that's why Uscreen has created a free educational resource called Membership Plus that teaches you how to build a successful membership from start to finish. Uh, in fact, um, let me see if I can quickly find it. I should have had the tab up here. Membership Plus Uscreen. Here we go. Yeah, so, um, so I actually um, have some exclusive videos in here that I've done with creators like uh, John on Yushai uh, as well. Oh, it seems like I can't, oh, there we go. Boom, there we go. So this is Membership Plus um, and um, they have all sorts of videos in here and um, kind of, oh, there's Rob. Actually, that, that's another thing that uh, that I wanted to mention is that you know one of the most important reasons that I think you should check out Uscreen is that they're just awesome people. I've had multiple chances to hang out with folks on their team like Rob, which is, you can see him here in the in the, uh, in the brown shirt, uh, and Sray uh, at a couple of recent conferences, and they just could not be nicer people uh, and more dedicated to, to serving the creator economy. So if you are a video first creator interested in learning more about how to build a profitable membership that will get you off the social media hamster wheel, and finally create stable, predictable income for yourself, uh, make sure to click the link in the uh, description box of this live stream um, and uh, and tell them that Creator Wizard uh, sent you. Uh, in fact, you can uh, get a free demo. Uh, so uh, the link below will send you to this page um, and uh, you can chat with, uh, with folks on their team about what a, mem a membership might look like for your creator business. Um, anyways, thanks again to uh, Uscreen for sponsoring this portion of the live stream. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so uh, we had a uh, question here from uh, Katie that I wanted to get back to. So Katie says um, in the Instagram chat that I have uh, 26K followers on X and Tom Bilyeu is coming on my podcast this month in May and in May, and I still have a question about uh, would I be able to get a sponsorship? So this is something that a lot of... Um, creators ask is like, is, is there a threshold that I need to meet before I can, you know, feel, be worthy or be, you know, attract brands that they would want to, uh, you know, the, to collaborate with me, you know, oh, is it 10,000? Is it 15? Is it 50,000? Is it a hundred thousand? I get this question constantly. Um, and there's this concept that I talk about called the sponsorship continuum, which is that what you pitch has to change depending on where you're at in your creator journey. Right. And, and so let's say you're just starting out. If you're if you were to reach out to a brand and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I would love to talk about you to my 200 YouTube subscribers, or to my you know 200 you know average you know downloads on my podcast," that's likely not going to move the needle for the brand. If their goal is let's say sales or something like that, right? And so it's no wonder that they're pushing you to, "Hey, we'll send you the thing for free," or "Hey, join our affiliate program," because it's no sweat off their back. They don't have to outlay any sort of capital to collaborate with you. So yeah, we'll, we'll have you be our content army talking about us for free. And hey, if you generate a sale, we'll throw you a couple coins, right? That, that's the preferred setup for a lot of brands, right? I, I, imagine you were a brand. That's probably how you'd want to do it if someone came to you, uh, you know, pitching you something like that that didn't have that large of a, 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 of a presence, right? Um, and so, but... That doesn't mean that you can't provide value to the brand. So probably what you're doing in that instance is you're going to go and reach out to, um, you know, you're gonna go and look and do an audit of their presence on the internet. Do they not have a YouTube channel at all? Or are they only posting their 30 second TV ads on there? Have you ever <laughs> gone to a brand's YouTube channel and like that, well, that's probably not gonna work on YouTube, right? Do they not have a TikTok? Do they not, are they not posting any content on Instagram, let's say, or LinkedIn or wh whatever it is on their company blog? Do they not have a company podcast, whatever? I was, in fact, I was, doing a coaching call with a creator recently who wanted to pitch a, a particular brand. And we went and started looking and auditing their social presence. And we saw on Instagram that they had not posted anything since October of last year. <laughs> so it's been months, right? And so perhaps the thrust of that pitch is, hey, brand, I, you know, I, I think you could be telling your brand story in a more compelling way on Instagram. I can create five to 10 you know, videos, photos for you a week or a month or whatever it is um, that you post, that you repurpose on your website, that you upload natively on your social media, that you run paid advertising with brand. Yeah, it's gonna be two, five, 10K a month, whatever, but that's what you probably pitch in the beginning when you're just starting out. Hey, go take a look at my platform. It's my portfolio. 
So that is the very beginning of the sponsorship continuum. It's understanding what to pitch when you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have a large audience and you don't have a, a lot of influence. Now you grow, okay? So we're, we're, we're uh, a little bit more mature now, right? Maybe we're getting thousands of downloads or views on our platform now, uh, and we have more experience and we have more influence. People are starting to listen to what we have to say. Well, maybe the pitch is more of a hybrid now where you're gonna create some content for them to use. Yeah, maybe now you do syndicate that content on your platforms. That becomes meaningful now, right? So it's kind of a combo. Maybe there's a little bit of consulting that you're going to do for them. And then now we've reached kind of the end of the continuum or, or, or further along down that, that path. And you're getting tens of thousands of views or downloads or opens on your newsletter or whatever it is. Now it becomes very meaningful for the, the, the sole focus of that campaign is for you to organically distribute that campaign on your platforms, regardless of what content format, whatever platforms you're on, that becomes very meaningful and then that's the thrust of your pitch. And so the point is, is that what you pitch changes based on where you're at in your journey. And so what I hope you hear, I hope this is a very liberating thing, is that it now does not matter at all where you're at. You can pitch a brand regardless of how many followers you have, right? Um, and so, so I hope I hope this is helpful for you, Katie, and kind of stretch your brain around kind of what's possible, um, because uh, it, you know there is no yeah may, maybe one brand told you one time like okay yeah you have to you know there's an arbitrary threshold we only you know uh, work with people who hit this you know level or whatever, um, but uh, but you can't let you know that that's that does not mean that that's what every brand thinks. OK, um, so so I hope that that I hope you hear that. Um, Ragas Sile says, hey, Justin, uh, good to see you here. Unknown username says, is this live? Yes, this is live. We've got Katricia Rose here. Um, uh, Sarah Dawn says, oh, I got to go today. I'll catch you on the replay. Uh, no worries. No worries. Um, good to see you here again, uh, Sarah. Have a wonderful weekend. John said, um, this is gold. I never thought about creating content for them to post. That's awesome. Yes, exactly. Love to hear that that's a, a mindset shift for you. Um, Eileen says in the TikTok chat, what if what if you have less than uh, 2K followers? Will that work? Yes, absolutely. Just kind of run the playbook that I just mentioned of like probably when you're in the beginning, you go out. Maybe there's some brands on TikTok that you have your eye on that either don't have a lot of followers. They're not posting super consistently, but you're like a TikTok fiend and you're always swiping and you know the trending sounds or what's you know what what people are really talking about right now. And you say, hey, like, here's the thing, like. Brands, most brands do not have time to spend all day consuming TikTok content, let's say, for example. But if you do and you know that, you know, the latest trending thing is like the grimace, you know, trend or whatever, where you're going and doing something crazy or what, you know, it, it seems like it changes every week of like what the trending thing or is the trending sound. Right. And if you're not as a brand, if you're not a consumer, like swiping and seeing what everyone is like, you know, because trends blow up, you know, trends blow up. They, they, it's this roller coaster, right? It, it like blows up for like four days and then it's like over. Right. And so if you have to have someone who like is on the front end of that trend to be able to activate on a trend like that super quickly. Um, and, and if you can tell them, I'll be that person for you because I have my finger on the pulse of what's happening pop culturally on this particular platform, I'll be that person for you on a freelance basis. And I'll turn something around that inserts your brand into the pop cultural narrative um, because of this thing that's happening, this phenomenon that's happening on the internet right now. Right. And so, so that is a very, very valuable thing to a brand, especially a small brand that does not have 20 people on their marketing team. Maybe it's only one person in their marketing department or two people or whatever. And so if you can be their kind of person with their ear to the ground who understands, uh, you know, what their target consumer cares about, that's a really valuable thing. That's something they'll pay for. They may not have the funds to hire that person on a full-time basis, but yeah, maybe they'll pay you a thousand, two thousand bucks a month to like, yeah, be their eyes and ears. I bet you there's a lot of brands who would pay for something like that. There's an idea. What do we think of that? Give me some praise hands emojis, some mind blown emojis, some diamonds or something in the chat here. The money tongue guy, what do you think here? Let's do some, let's get some love here. Are we excited? 
All right, those of you who are just tuning in, we have less than an hour and a half before my seven day pitch challenge before the enrollment closes. If you want to get seven days of accountability, we are doing a live kickoff call today talking about some of these very similar topics, but in more detail. Uh, that's happening at 1 p.m. Pacific today, 4 p.m. Eastern. There's still about an hour and 20 minutes to enroll. You can go to creatorwizard.com slash pitch challenge if you want to enroll. We have over 50 creators that are already signed up. Um, in fact, we have, it's crazy, like we actually have some alumni of our Brand Deal Wizard course that are participating as well. Because I think that that's, um, some people reach out and we're like, can I still do this? I, I already went through your other program, but like, I feel like I want to just like jumpstart the process again and like get back into it and start reaching back out to brands. I have all the other, I have the tool set that I need from, from you know, already from the larger course, but yeah, this is just going to be a good way for me to like get back into things. And I was like, heck yeah, let's go. Let's do this. So I'm excited to see some familiar faces uh, back in uh, from, from brand deal wizard uh, in the pitch challenge as well. Um, I, I've been so, uh, I've been so, uh, pleased and tickled and surprised at how many people are this, this is resonating with this pitch challenge. Um, because I guess I just never, I'll be honest with you. Like I have, I have like, it's been a long time since I have been there where it's like, I, I, it's been such a, a routine for me for so long, especially having run the agency that like developing that habit, um, is it's been so long since I've been there. And so it's been so helpful, um, reimagining like, okay, if I had to go back for Justin from 15 years ago or Justin from 10 years ago and put my hand on his shoulder and be like, okay, here's how I would, here's how you need to develop a pitching habit. Knowing everything that I've known over the last 15 years, it's been so, it's been so, such a thrill to, to design this program and, and be able to, uh, kind of mentor and advise, uh, kind of the next generation of creators to be like, Hey, here, here's, Here's what I wish I would have known <laughs> like 15, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And so, so I, it's been, it's been such a blessing to be able to do something like this. Um, and, and especially like have it be at an approachable, uh, uh investment level for, for y'all, because I, I understand like not everyone's going to be able to, uh, you know, spring for whatever, $1,500 or 3000 for the live cohort. I know that that's like a certain type of creator. You're at a certain level of, of financial stability to afford something like this. And so, um, I'm always trying to think up creative ways to, to serve, um, serve, as many people as possible. So, so, um, it's really, it's been, uh, been exciting. Um, we've got sand chick, uh, one, two, three tuning in on Instagram, V price, uh, meta with Sahil, uh, Hashim, Hashim Lafond. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, good to see you here. Brian Tate says, will the classes be recorded for those who work? Yeah. So there's only, there's two live classes and then the rest is kind of like on demand asynchronous videos. Uh, there's a private pop-up space in my private community that you get access to for the duration of the challenge. And so, Yes, there uh, the two live calls, the, the live call today, and then we have a live pitch roast on Monday um, that where you can submit your pitches uh, to for, for the chances of me me roasting them live. Uh, and those are both going to be recorded. So, yes, you will have the ability to, like, watch the replays if you're not able to attend live. Um, and uh, and so. So, yeah, don't don't worry about that. And you'll maintain access to the lot to the. Um, uh, like the, all the videos and replays and stuff for, for about 10 days. Um, and so, so yeah, hopefully that answers, uh, your question, Brian. Um, Shannon skip to my life. What's going on? Good to see you here. Speaking of alumni of our brand deal wizard program, we've got Hanadi in here. We've got Shannon. It, it, it always like su surprises me so much that, that, uh, some of the alumni of my programs are in here every week getting better. Look, we talk about habit here. Talk about habit. Um, uh, Emma, who's in my ongoing coaching program, wizards guild. Um, she, she said that she, plays the live streams in the background as she's doing her pitches each week. So it's become a habit for her that, you know, it, it, uh, it, uh, you know, she, she's a perfect example of someone who has incredible tenacity. You know, I, I've talked about this before that she shared this anecdote that, um, you know, she pitched a particular brand, um, had to pitch them four times and follow, this was four times emailing and following up with them four times without hearing back from them. Before they finally responded and said, oh, thank you so much. It's, it's been so busy. Yes, let's move forward. This is a great opportunity because we have this thing that we need to work on. Thank you so much. Four times without hearing back from them. And now she's moving forward on a, on a fat deal. Can, can you imagine? Could you have that tenacity? Could you set that goal for yourself? Incredible. Yeah, so, so I love uh, sharing... Um, uh, Shannon or uh, Emma's anecdote. Uh, Shannon says, just landed my highest deal. Holy cow. Let, come on. 
sharing our wins on a Friday here. Come on, let's give. We need to give some golf claps, some praise hands, some money chung, tongue emojis in the chat for Shannon, who just landed her highest deal. Holy cow. Give us, give us, uh, give us some, some, uh, some context. Like, how did this deal come together? Give us a little bit of background, Shannon. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> Scales Caros says, if you don't say my name right, I'm gonna leave. Oh no, saying goodbye. I'm sorry. Okay, you can, you can take off. Sorry, I didn't see your name in, in time. Um, uh, Hashima Lafond said, I thought, I thought this was pre, pre-recorded. Your lighting is, is phenomenal. No, it's not pre-recorded. I'm so glad to hear, hear that uh, I pronounced your name correctly. That's b- boom. Love to hear it. We've got the Brim Factor tuning in. We've got Resi with casting. Uh, good to see you here as well. Um, yeah, glad to hear that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. If I don't pronounce people names correctly. I always try on the second time. Um, yeah. Katie says, I joined the challenge. You had me with the psychology of stopping asking after getting no's. I'm so glad to hear that you joined Katie. Boom. That's so exciting. Uh, I had, (laughs) I had you with the, uh, with the, with the psychology thing. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just pulled out. I see your, I see your, uh, enrollment here. That's so, so cool. Mm. Oh yeah, Molly here says, yeah, doing pitches during the live stream is genius. Yes, Molly, so you got are you gonna develop that habit? Are you gonna do it? Just like Emma, there we go. I love to love to hear it. Yeah, get, gotta figure out everyone has their own own methodology. Let me let me tell you guys a little bit of inside baseball here. One thing that uh, is something new that I also did during this is I had, um, it's called an upsell, uh, where when you, uh, people who, who join the, the pitch challenge, there's another page before the kind of purchase successful page where it's like, hey, um, before you complete your purchase, do you also want access to this other thing? And the other thing that I, that I, I offered for the very first time that I've never done before is I offered my sponsorship wheel tracker template, which is like a really sophisticated uh, template that was developed in Notion, if you're familiar with the software Notion, um, that helps you keep track of your pitches. So we, uh, you know, I hired like a Notion expert to help me bring this to life, but it's basically like a a tool that allows you to uh, remind yourself of like, oh, wow, yeah, I need to follow up with this brand. And it's not just for pitching. It's also for bringing the entire deal through the entire eight step sponsorship wheel that I teach, right? So you've got the pitching, negotiating, contract, concept, production, feedback, publication, analysis, so the, all the eight steps. And so you're able to keep track of where these these partnerships are throughout the entire process. And so um, I experimented with offering this standalone because I've never offered my templates um, standalone before ever. Um, and, the, and the reason, it, it's kind of, so the way in which I've always appro- approached education is that I believe a lot of people are always emailing me like, oh, will you sell me your pricing calculator or your proposal templates, your sponsorship tracker, or you like all the case study templates. Like, I have all this, so many like resources that I have in my brand deal wizard program. And I've never sold them kind of standalone a la carte like that um, because I believe that selling tactics without strategy is irresponsible. That's the way I've always felt. Even though I I know that I I have foregone short-term revenue for for not doing that, um, I just have felt that that's an irresponsible thing to do as an educator. Because if you don't understand, if you get that template, you know, you don't really understand the mechanism behind like how the prices are the way they are or like understanding that it's a baseline and how to adjust it if, based on the contextual deal dynamics. Um, or you, you know, you don't really understand why this particular page is in the proposal template and the order. It's a very specific reason why it's in the order that it is. If you don't understand that, like I, I feel as though I'm doing a disservice to you, right? Um, and so, uh, but there's one template in particular, which is my sponsorship wheel tracker um, that uh, I actually believe is quite useful, even if you don't you know, have a lot of strategy behind it, um, or, or you probably will, will be able to kind of pick it up um, throughout the, the course of the seven day challenge or also some of my videos. And so I decided that this is the one, this is the one that I'm going to um, do it uh, standalone. And so, um, you know, it, uh, it's been so surprising to me because almost 50% of the people who signed up for the pitch challenge, uh, decided to, to, uh, get access to the tracker. So that blew me away. I was totally not expecting that. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was really excited. I'm excited that people are uh, finding value and, and wanting to like, you know, stay organized and, and tracking this type of stuff. Um, yeah, really excited. We see, I see, I am Dolma tuning in, uh, on IG, uh, Dolma. I, I, I responded to your DM on TikTok about the pitch challenge. So hope to see you in there. Uh, enrollment is closing in the next hour and 15 minutes. So I hope to, hope to see you in there. Good to see you here. 
Uh, Delilah says, once this live is done, I will be joining too. Boom. Oh my goodness. I am so thrilled to hear that. That is, uh, is awesome to hear. Uh, we've got Chimera Salizzi, uh, tuning in, um, on, on Instagram. Uh, good to see you here, uh, as well. Um, let's see here. I'm going to take a swig here. Mm. Um, um, I want to, um, make a quick note here. I'm sent Bianca. I'm sending you a note. Um, uh, because I don't want to forget this. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, okay. We got some questions here. Um, sorry. I'm like thinking and talking at the same time. Okay. Um, uh, okay. We've got some questions here in the YouTube chat. Uh, Jenny, Jenny says, Jenny Lou yoga. How often do you run brand deal wizard? Uh, great question. Um, so those of you who are not familiar, brand deal wizard is my, my kind of my signature course where I teach you the entire nuts to bolts strategy of how to land consistent, um, brand partnerships. And I have two different formats. I have an on-demand version um, that uh, is about fifteen hundred dollars, and I have my uh, my cohort, my live cohort that is about three k. And I run that typically three times a year. Um, I am skipping the winter. I mentioned that I'm skipping the winter uh, cohort of Brandy Wizard because I'm doing the pitch challenge. Um, also, I'm writing a book, so I needed to you know kind of give some space to uh, deep deep focus for the book. Um, so uh, I am likely going to be reducing the number of live cohorts that I do um, per year. Actually. Actually, I'm um, going to be bringing it down from three to either two or one. I'm not sure um, because um, I just frankly, I, I've kind of seen the light that uh, the impact that I'm able to have with creators in the on demand um, setting uh, has been a lot uh, a lot more awesome than I expected, to be honest. Um, and so probably the next live cohort is going to be in um, the June, July time frame. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll, we'll have to see, but yeah, at the very least, it'll be either June, July or in the winter, like October, November timeframe. But if you, if you want to get started now, like the, the on-demand version is, is, uh, you can enroll at any time. Um, and you do get access to three months of live office hours, um, uh, with the on-demand program as well. So if that's something that you are, uh, are, are interested in, um, uh, uh, Nakota fishing says, Hey, Justin, do you have a community, uh, or, or similar where, where the community can post and give uh, feedback to each other's pitches? Yeah, Nakota. So, so we have a pop-up, uh, private community on circle, um, for this, uh, live pit for the uh, seven day pitch challenge. So you will, if you do sign up for the, uh, seven day pitch challenge, you you'll get invited to a, uh, kind of a pop-up space that, uh, for about 10 days, you'll get access to that. And that's exactly what, what we'll, uh, we'll do in there is that people will be giving feedback uh, on pitches directly from our team, as well as other peers within the, uh, in the community, as well as alumni from, uh, past courses and stuff like that too. So if that's something that you're excited about, it's like getting feedback on your pitches that definitely would recommend, uh, signing up for the seven day pitch challenge. Again, it's creatorwizard.com slash, uh, pitch challenge. And I will drop the, uh, the link into the live chat, uh, as well again. Um, let's see here. We got a question, uh, in the Instagram chat from vlog epicness. What's going on vlog epicness. Good to see you here. Um, how much time should I take to pitch a brand? I feel like I spend way too much time crafting an email. I even started making pitch videos to send to the brands. When I don't hear back from brands, I feel like I should have just used that time making a video for my audience. This is a really great question. Um, you know, um, I'm always a big fan of, um, spending, like, I, I think your tactic is correct, which is that spending more time, uh, developing a more customized pitch, uh, even a video pitch, like you mentioned, um, is going to yield a higher return than kind of a spray and pray approach where it's not customized and it feels like a copy and paste job. And you're, you know, sh you're scatter shotting this to a hundred different brands. I am always a much bigger fan of, of going small and more concentrated or more detailed pitches. Um, the thing that I'll say though, is that there, there's two main things and we're going to, we're going to talk about it in the seven day pitch challenge, but there's two main things that you have to consider when you send a pitch. It's like what you're saying and who you send it to. And I've talked before, like the, the content, the meat of your pitch is really critical because if you're, if the, if the vast majority of what you're saying is a narcissistic, um, <laughs> like a narcissistic, uh, uh, pitch about, Hey, it's me. I'm vlog epicness. I get this many views. I have this many subscribers. Here's my demographics. I'm awesome. Uh, you know, I think it would be great. I've loved your brand. I've used it for five years. They'll delete that email immediately. They don't care. They don't, they don't know who you are. There's lots of creators who could say stuff like that. 
And, um, you know, and so the, the meat, the thrust of what you're pitching and making it about them and not you is critical, right? So that, so that's a big part of it. The second thing is who you're sending it to, because if you're sending it to the right person, what, what happens when you receive a, a message or an email from someone that something that was clearly not meant to you, it's not your job description. You don't handle that. They're either not going to respond or they're going to delete it. Right. And so, um, understanding and getting better at those two things, uh, is, is really critical. Right. And then there's this third thing, which is understanding that at the end of the day, there's going to be some brands who just, even if you do both of those things, right, they're just not going to respond or they're going to ghost you. And you can't, you have to understand that that's part of the game, right? It's not, and, and if you're, if you let the ghosting or you let the rejection convince you that cold pitching doesn't work, you're going to have a real tough time getting sponsorships in the long run, right? Um, and so this, this is exactly what the seven day pitch challenge is, is, is trying to give you mindset shifts to overcome a lot of this stuff and get better at these things because it, it's an iterative process. It's not like a, a, a simple fix overnight. It's something that you get better at. In the beginning, I sucked at this. I, I was doing those really uncustomized, unpersonalized pitches and it was really embarrassing. It was really embarrassing, but I learned, I got better. I, I switched up my approach. I, I A-B tested the subject lines. I A-B tested the copy of what I was saying in there. And I started learning and getting better. And, and a lot, honestly, a lot of what I talk about in my content is to help you prevent the mistakes and avoid the mistakes that I made, uh, you know, over the years, uh, doing, doing pitches with brands. So, um, Hopefully that's helpful, uh, vlog epicness. That that that's really kind of how I approach this stuff. Um, uh, John says N -n -n uh, a, a BDW Discord would be epic. Yeah, so I don't have a Discord. Um, I have a, a a private community though. It's not on it's not on a Discord, but I do like to be clear. There is a private community uh, for for Brand Deal Wizard that is like a forum like that uh, where you can get feedback from your peers on your pitches and you know brands are coming inbound asking questions to you and that's exactly what this what what that what our Brand Deal Wizard uh, private community is all about. So uh, so. Rest assured, don't worry. We do have we do have that private community as well. Um, we've got Franny Crooks tuning in on Instagram. We've got Daya tuning in on TikTok. Good to see you here, Parvez Laka. Um, and uh, we've got the seasoned agent uh, tuning in. The Canadian Canadian budget uh, cook eat repeat three sixty five. Yeah, that, that sounds that's that's me. Cook eat repeat uh, three sixty five. I, I like the username here. Um, man, I can't believe how quickly uh, time went. I'll, I'll just use a, the last couple minutes of our live stream to just real quickly for those of you guys who, who weren't here at the top when I was mentioning we have almost a little bit more than an hour left before uh, enrollment closes for my seven day pitch challenge. Let me actually share my screen here. Why not? Here's the thing. Here's the thing guys. Um, okay. Let me, let me share my screen here and I'm going to boom. Um, so, so, um, uh, so this is the seven day pitch challenge. As I mentioned, you get seven days of accountability. You get access to a private group for the duration of the challenge. We have that live pitch audit on Monday that I was mentioning uh, with me, where you can submit for the ch submit your pitches for the chances of me uh, of me like auditing it live. Um, you get the pitch planning worksheet. Um, you uh, we're gonna there's a training about how to uncover the right brand contacts and their email addresses. So super super high valuable stuff. Again, it's only it's it's the investment is ninety seven dollars. So um, you know. Maybe it's less than a fancy night out uh, for for dinner with your partner. Uh, come on, like like if this leads to you getting your next sponsorship, like come on, I think this is a worthwhile worthwhile investment. And if you haven't seen my my hype video yet, you should go to the page just to see the hype video because the hype video I I wore some wigs. Let me give you a little quick Justin, preview. Like I'm I wore some. Any look at like look at me in a wig. Just, Don't you want to see me? I have two different wigs. I'm playing myself, two different per, per, uh, personas, Jekyll and Hyde. You're going to want to see that, right? You're going to want to see that. Um and uh <laughs> and so uh yeah, I definitely would recommend uh you uh <laughs> would love to would love to see uh you all in there. And the other thing too is that like do do you notice how I have absolutely no shame talking about the the things that uh, like I'm working on because, um, you know, I think that that's like a, uh, uh, something that a lot of creators struggle with is like talking about the things that they're doing on, whether it's their own, you know, the things that they're working on, whether it's their own products, their own coaching courses, even sponsorships, they feel worried that they, they're going to like, people are going to be mad at them and like, Oh, you're shilling for your own stuff and like all this stuff. And like, I have absolutely no hesitation or concern talking about my stuff. You want to know why it's because I know how ludicrously valuable it is. 
If you can go through this program for $97 and one of the five or 10 brands that you ultimately pitch, you go on to land in a deal with them, like I can almost virtually guarantee you that that's going to like, you know, be a worthwhile investment for you. Like, look, I talk about a lot that like creators somehow are like nervous to invest in, in their own education and their own knowledge. When you're in any other field and you want to get ahead in your career, you want to get a promotion, you want to get a raise, what do you do? You go back to school, you go and you get a certification, you learn skills that you didn't have before, but somehow as creators, oh, learning to like, you know, get better or take an online program or to get coaching or take a course or something. Oh man, that, that, that I'm never going to do that. That's, that's ludicrous. Right. And yet you're over here in college paying thousands of dollars per class. And are you using that? I don't know. Maybe you are, but like, I just, I think this stigma around like programs that are like, especially if like sponsorships are one of the major ways in which you drive income as a creator, you're not going to want to learn to get better at that. Okay, fine. You don't want to look fine. I, I, I'm outspoken about this stuff. I'm outspoken because I think that it's ludicrous. You have to untrain your mind. You have to rewire your brain. You have to understand that you have to invest in your knowledge. And I will, I, if it doesn't work, I'll give you your money back. Like I'll, I just don't, like I said, if, like, if you're not satisfied with it, fine. I'll give you your $97 back. Fine. Whatever. Like seriously, like I have no, I have no hesitation saying that because I know that if you go through this and you develop, you turn this into a habit for yourself, um, then I, if, if I can't help you, no one can. That's what, that's what I'm gonna say. Well, may, maybe someone else can, but like, I, okay, I, I will say my, my method, my, my, my mentorship method, my coaching methods, they definitely are kind of more of a tough love approach. And I, I understand that. And so maybe you don't need the tough love. Maybe you want someone to like put their arm around you and be like, it's okay, you don't need to try hard. It's okay, it's hard. Uh, yeah, there's too many creators out there accepting stuff for free. It's okay, right? Like, it's okay, let's let's vilify them. Or all these brands out here, they're trying to screw creators. Like, let's vilify them, they're the enemy. If that's the person that you need, don't follow me. Unfollow me right now because I'm, <laughs> I'm not that person. I'm gonna tell you how it is. Brands are not malicious, the vast majority of them. They're awesome, they're just people, just like you and I trying to live their day to day and have an enjoyable time living their life. Um, and so if you want to vilify them, they're not the enemy. They're, you're not, you're not going into the octagon to battle them. It's a relay race. They're trying to hand the baton to you so that you can take it to the finish line. And oh, by the way, that baton is wrapped with a bunch of hundred dollar bills, thousand dollar bills. Okay. Bianca in the chat said the hype video alone is worth $97. Thank you, Bianca. I think you're a little biased though, cause you're on my team, but I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, Franny says, so true. No, we're not giving back the $97. Thank you. Thank you, Franny. I appreciate that very much. Elizabeth says, ha ha ha. I got, I got sober with tough love. I am really sweet most of the time, but tough love is the true push that I need. I love to hear it, Elizabeth. I love to hear it because this is just my, this is my teaching method. Honestly, like this is, this is truly, um, this is how it's, this is how I've learned throughout my, my time where, where you, you, you know, I think sometimes we tend to surround ourselves with yes people. We tend to surround ourselves, whether it's in our friend group or whether it's at our job, we've gravitated to the coworkers who are nice to us, you know, whether it's maybe you run a business and you hire employees that are yes people or whatever, but it's very dangerous to, to only surround yourself with people who, oh yeah, Justin, that's a great idea. Or, oh yeah, Elizabeth, that's a great idea. That, that this video is awesome. When in reality, you can look at the metrics and they say the opposite. It's like, no. Like you need to change this or you need to do this. This is one of the reasons, one of the reasons I love working with D on my team, who's the director of operations and community. Honestly, she, I'll say like, D, I got this great idea. We should do this or we should change this or we should reduce the price for this or we should sell this. And she's always like, no. <laughs> like a lot of times she's like, no, Justin, I don't like that idea. That's not a good idea. Right? She takes as much ownership over what we've built at Creator Wizard as I do, um, but she's this perfect yin and yang for me. Cause I'm, I'm this person in my head in the clouds, like wanting to do all these crazy things and all these big aspirations and all this stuff. And she's over here being like, hold on a second here. Like we need to think about the implications. What's the long-term repercussions of making changes like that, et cetera, et cetera. And so want to give a big shout out to D um, if she's here, I don't know if you are, but, um, but like, I feel like you need those people in your life who are going to call you on your ish and be like, nah, like, no, this pitch actually sucks. This is a, this is bad. This is not good. Like you, that's not the right person to send it to. That's not the right thing to 
say, I'm going to be that person to say it. And okay, if you're ready to get, if you're ready to get that kind of tough love dished out to you, um, then uh, <laughs> then then I'm uh, then you absolutely should join the seven day pitch challenge. Um, and uh, Jenny says, you just convinced me. I am joining. Boom. Boom. Love to see it. Love to see it. I'm so excited to have you here uh, in the seven day pitch challenge. Um, like, yes, I'm excited, Jenny. Um, Growing Green Landscapes here has a comment on Instagram, which I want to call out. The problem with many people is that they'll pay the $97 and consume, but not take action on the things you teach. As a small creator, I know how important taking action on these small steps are. Keep at it. You know what? I, I really, really appreciate that uh, Growing Green Landscapes. And you know, here, here's the thing that I've learned about education, about teaching people how to how to do things on the internet, um, is that there are certain things in my control and there are certain things out of my control. However, it is my job as an educator to do everything I humanly can to set that person uh, to to set the things that I can't control to minimize those as much as possible. So yes, at the end of the day, I cannot control whether this creator will hit send on this email. I can't control that. That's right. But if there are things that I can do to de-risk it, whether it's mental things or whether it's tactical things, I am going to attack those from both positions. And so previously, I've talked about this before, that previously, I didn't even really talk about the mindset stuff. I, I was like, oh, I hit send on the email. It's not a big deal. Who cares, right? Um, and, uh, and, and when I really started realizing, like, no, that's actually a very, very big obstacle for a lot of people to actually hit send on a, on a pitch, let's say, um, then I started, uh, like, diving much more into the mindset stuff, right? And previously, I wasn't like that. I was like, oh, well, I can't control that, whether or not if someone doesn't have the confidence whatever. I can not control that. Right. But I've really, I've really changed my tune about that. Right. And so I do believe that there's things that I can do to de-risk the, the feeling that people have of like hitting send on their email. But, but generally you are right that like, I can't, yeah, I can't like look over your shoulder and make sure you're creating a pitching habit and you're doing it consistently. Yes. At the end of the day, that is, you know, I have to trust that you're going to do it for yourself and, you, and you're right. But I do believe I want to take as much ownership back as possible. Like I want to set you up as best as I can for success. And, 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 uh, you know, again, a lot of it comes down to you putting one foot in front of the other each week and doing it yourself. But I'm trying to, I never had this pitch challenge. That's the other, like, look, previously I was like, well, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to teach you about pitch challenges, but or I'm going to teach you about, uh, about how to do this in a lot of my YouTube videos and stuff like that. But you know, if you want to learn the entire methodology, cause I really do believe you need to learn everything. It's not just about pitching. There's all these other things that I teach, obviously steps two through eight through my program, right? Like you have to do the whole program to understand it. And so I've really come around. That's why I'm doing the seven day pitch challenges. It's like, okay, like, let me just teach you this one thing, because if I can teach you this one thing, it's going to have a really profound impact on your business. Because once you get that first brand who responds to you and says, hey, yeah, this is interesting. Let's talk. You're going to be like, oh, uh, OK, yeah, yeah. Uh, fire drill here. Right. Like, got to figure this out here. So uh, anyways, I, I, I'm i learning, too. I, I'm learning. Things are evolving here. Um, yeah, um, that, uh, that, uh, John says, what's the alumni Al alumni of my brand deal wizard program? I think that that's what I'm, that's what I'm mentioning. I'm alumni of my brand deal wizard program. Um, all right. Um, Holy cow, we're at time. All right, guys, literally, there is less than one hour uh, for enrollment uh, for the seven-day pitch challenge. If you want, I'll drop the link one more time. It's uh, creatorwizard.com slash pitch challenge. Uh, would love to see uh, each and every one of you all here. Hope to see you here. Stephanie and Jenny, I think I, I heard, and Delilah, I think you um, all heard that uh, that you are going to join, so that's super exciting. Um, and uh, if, uh, if it's not the right time for you, totally understand. Um, and uh, once again, thank you so much to you screen for uh, being today's sponsor of the live stream. Make sure to click their link uh, in the look. You know, y'all know that, uh, you know, the sponsorships here at Creator Wizard also help me to continue bringing you awesome free live streams and content like this. So when you patronize, when you check out the sponsors of, of our business, it really means a lot. And so if you do end up uh, booking a, a, a free demo, make sure to mention our name and that we sent you. It really does mean a lot uh, and, and matter a lot um, for, for me and for our business. And uh, and uh, hope it uh, hope it's uh, impactful for you. Have a wonderful weekend and a great Friday and uh, hope to see you in the seven day pitch challenge. Let's go.